Hello folks and welcome back to your introduction to histology part 2 where I'm going to discuss connective tissue in more detail. Now unlike epithelial tissue, connective tissues have loosely packed cells with considerable matrix. The matrix is extracellular material, that is stuff outside of the cells, and it is produced by the cells themselves. It comes in two forms. It's either a fluid or a semi-fluid, which allows for the diffusion of materials in between cells. And then there are the fibers. The fibers actually do the work of connective tissue. They support and they protect. And we're going to learn to identify three different kinds under the microscope, and they are distinct. First, we have collagen. Collagen are tough white fibers. They, they do not like to stretch. So they provide a, a very tough protection. Elastin does like to stretch. It is elastic, meaning that it will stretch and then return to its original shape. And then there are the thin and delicate reticular fibers that create a network of support for an organ. Now there are so many different kinds of connective tissue that we need a way of classifying them. So we have some subclasses of connective tissue. First we'll start with embryonic connective tissue. And as the name implies, there's an awful lot of it in an embryo, but you carry it through your, in your body throughout your life. You tend to have less of it as you get older. The most abundant kind is called mesenchyme. This is the embryonic connective tissue that will turn into all of the other types of connective tissues once it matures. The other kind of connective tissue is called mucous connective tissue. This is found in only one place in the umbilical cord where it helps support the umbilical cord through your development inside your mother. The other types of connective tissue are called adult connective tissues. This is what happens to mesenchyme when it matures and takes on a particular role. There are four different kinds of adult connective tissue and this is where it gets messy. Each type of adult connective tissue has some subtypes. For example, number one, connective tissue proper has five subtypes that we'll look at. There are three types of cartilage and luckily there's only one type of osseous or bone tissue and one type of vascular tissue. Here's a micrograph of embryonic mesenchyme. The arrows are pointing to the cells of the mesenchyme and then the matrix is the messy portion outside of it. I suspect those are reticular fibers. This is basically a tissue that has not differentiated into another type of connective tissue and is found throughout the body. Here's a picture of an adult connective tissue in the category of connective tissue proper. It's called loose or a realer connective tissue. Those two terms are interchangeable for this tissue. You will see in it the thicker, more translucent collagen fibers and then the thinner elastin and reticular fibers. It's really difficult to distinguish between reticular and elastic fibers here, but they are interwoven in there. And the darker spots are the cells. The cells of connective tissue are called fibrocytes. The fibrocytes are what produce the, the matrix, the fibers and the extracellular fluid. Loose connective tissue is found wherever epithelium is connected to an organ. It produces sheets of this protective covering. This is a micrograph of another adult connective tissue proper called dense regular connective tissue. The fibers are running to left and right on your screen and are so densely packed that it's hard to see the individual fibers. The chief type of fiber here is collagen. The fibrocytes are squeezed in between some of the fibers and are the dark areas here. Dense regular connective tissue is what makes up your tendons and ligaments. Tendons connect muscle to bone and ligaments connect bone to bone in your skeletal system. In this slide you'll also see some other tissue. This is probably, here's another type of connective tissue proper, elastic connective tissue. The elastin fibers run north to south on your screen here and are these crinkly, crinkly fibers here. This is non-distended tissue and it more than likely comes from the lining of an artery. Arteries need to expand and contract quite well. So do the bronchial tubes in your lungs. You'll find some elastic connective tissue there. Here's an image of reticular connective tissue and this is a cross-section taken through a gland. The fibers are these, the reticular fibers are these networks of dark fibers that you see here. The beige color in between are probably the cells of a gland. 
This cross-section was taken through an endocrine gland, so you will find reticular connective tissue supporting endocrine glands. This is neat right here. This is a cross-section through a blood vessel, and there are some red blood cells trapped inside there. Here's a picture of adipose tissue, and the cells are called adipocytes. Adipocytes are more for storage than they are for support. What you will find inside of, a, of an adipocyte is triglycerides. Triglyceride is fat, and fat we store for energy. Adipose tissue actually has a couple of different functions. Not only will it store fuel for when you need it, but adipose tissue is needed for insulation against heat loss, as well as for padding between hard tissues and the outside of your body. Each structure that you see here is an adipocyte or a cell. The darker area is where all of the cell's cytoplasm and the nucleus are squished up. The rest of the white area is all triglyceride or fat. Now another subclass of adult connective tissue is cartilage. And as I said, there are three different types of cartilage. The most abundant is hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage seen, is seen here with these little cavities on the inside called lacuna. Lacuna are just basically that, little cavities. In Latin, the word lacuna means little lake. Inside of the lacuna, you will find the cells called chondrocytes. The matrix is a dense network of collagen fibers and elastin fibers, which do not show up here. But there is another material that's a solid called chondroit sulfate. If you've ever handled cartilage before, it's almost jelly-like, but it's really tough because the collagen fibers help hold it together. And hyaline cartilage is, is, is quite flexible because of the elastin fibers that are in it. Places where you'll find this, well, the cartilage of your nose and the cartilage at the ends of any long bone in your body is, is, is hyaline cartilage. Another type of cartilage is called elastic cartilage. This is the cartilage that can be found in your ear, the outer portion of your ear, and allows for distension. Here, the lacuna are more tightly packed. And typically you find at least two cells or chondrocytes per lacuna, which is true in hyaline cartilage as well. The matrix is primarily elastic fibers. That's the dark tissue surrounding the lacuna. Here is fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is quite dense. The types of fibers that are in here are elastin and collagen as well. You'll find fibrocartilage in between the vertebrae and things called intervertebral discs, where they act as little shock absorbers. Other places you will find it is between the two pubic bones and in the pad of cartilage in the knee, where it does the same thing as the intervertebral discs. It is a shock absorber. Here's a lacuna of a fibrocartilage with a... The third type of adult connective tissue is called osseous tissue. This is otherwise known as bone. So this is a thin cross-section to what we call compact bone. And the large circular structures are the what we call subunits of osseous tissue called an osteon. The darker slits inside are actually lacuna, again, with osteocytes on the inside of them. Osteocytes are bone cells. The hollow core of this circular structure is where blood vessels and lymph vessels would travel. What you're actually seeing is the cross-section through these long tubular structures of the osteons that run, run along the long axis of a long bone. Now, osseous tissue has both mineral matrix and an organic matrix. The mineral matrix is made up of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate. The organic matrix is made up of collagen fibers. Now, this is interesting. If you've ever taken a wishbone out of a turkey or a chicken and tried to break the wishbone without having it dried out. It's very difficult to break because the collagen fibers are still intact. When you dry it out, the collagen fibers become dried out and very brittle. And when you snap it, you're actually just breaking the mineral matrix. Finally, we get to vascular tissue, or otherwise known as blood. Blood has two basic types of cells in it, erythrocytes, or red blood cells, and leukocytes, which are white blood cells. The matrix is plasma. Now, obviously, you find blood in your circulatory system where it's moving all the time. Vascular tissue is considered a connective tissue because its cells develop from mesenchyme.
primary function of vascular connective tissue is to help transport and support other tissues of the body. And that's it for part two of your introduction to histology and connective tissue. If you have any questions, write them down and bring them to class. We'll see you then.